Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Fiona. So, I'm going to continue on with my story um, about um, my suitcases um, and moving to China. And also, somebody in the comment section asked me um, how long it took me to get my bearings once I moved to China. So, I'm going to kind of cover all of that in this vlog. So, check out part two, part one and part two um, of my vlogs to kind of get up to speed to know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, I've been sleeping for two days. I get up, it's, mm, it's Sunday and um, the only place that I've been to on that day, on the Sunday, later on in the day was to the supermarket. And I also met two of my colleagues as well. They had um, come back from their holiday a little bit earlier than they had planned. So I met those people. Um, and yeah, Sunday was, I didn't go anywhere except for the supermarket. So that was an interesting experience as well. Um, so Monday arrives and HR's there. I told them about my suitcase situation. My family had already shipped my suitcases and gave me, um, shared with me the uh, tracking number of the suitcases. But that's all I had. I didn't know if they were going to come to me directly or if I needed to go somewhere to pick them up. So, um, Monday came, told HR about my suitcases. I also didn't have a phone as well, as so I was telling them all, about all of what had happened. Ah, the stress. And um, it was just a waiting. So, Tuesday came, I'm tracking my packet, my suitcases, and they are on their way. Wednesday arrived, they are, it's showing as being in Shanghai. And so I asked, um, I asked uh, HR if they could um, call the number um, for customs or the airport to find out where my luggage was. And so they did some calling around. It took quite a while actually, because I mean, I didn't have a number other than the number I had um, for the shipping company and they gave me a number for Shanghai. I didn't have anything. And so what they came up, what they came up with or the feedback that they received was that my suitcases were, um, hadn't been, hadn't been kind of completely processed and actually the customs people would then contact, they contact me via email. So um, I waited and Wednesday I got an email saying that I can come and pick up my suitcases, um, which was a little bit disappointing because I thought that they would just be delivering them and bringing them to me. So anyway, um, I shared the email and I said, um, but when I found out, when I got the email actually, it was in the afternoon. So there was nothing I could actually have done in the afternoon about my suitcases. So I um, spoke to HR and I said, oh, can someone take me or the driver take me uh, to go and collect my suitcases in the morning? Um, but the driver, I think the driver had been booked to go somewhere. I don't know, he was, I know he wasn't available. And she said, oh, can you just wait until Friday? And you can go Friday morning. I said, no, I want to go tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I want to go and get my suitcases. And I said, don't worry, I'll go by myself. <laughs> Keep in mind, I've only been in China for less than two weeks. I don't have a phone. I don't speak Chinese. I don't know where I'm going. So I, um, I'm having this conversation <laughs> with the HR woman. And she said, oh, do you speak Chinese? Do you speak any Chinese? And if you go to China and you're living there, that's gonna be a question that you are always asked. Do you speak Chinese or do you speak any Chinese? Or people just start speaking to you in Chinese, assuming that you know what they're talking about. So I said, no, but it will be fine. What I, needed to, her to, what I needed her to do was just like write down certain things in Chinese. So I would write the English and then she would write the Chinese. So for instance, like for a taxi, you can hail a taxi down in Shanghai. Um, and also they ordered one for me to take, get to the train station. I needed the name of the train station and where I was going to get off. And so I got off one of the main stops is Longyang Road, um, downtown in Shanghai, and you can switch to um, a different train um, once you're there. So I knew that I needed to get off there and then I knew that I had to take a taxi to go to this particular location, which was deep, deep, deep in Pudong. Oh my God, it was the middle of nowhere. 
Anyway, so she wrote those out, she wrote some other information out in Chinese, that way I could show people. She kind of drew um, a map, a partial a map, because they had provided a map, but it wasn't very clear on how you get to that point. And again, I have no phone. So anyway, um, and I've already decided I'm going to go in the morning. Their opening work time was at nine o'clock. With the help of HR, I worked out, right, if I leave here at a particular time, I need to get to the train station. I needed to be there at nine. Ah, oh, the stress continues. <laughs> the stress continues. So anyway, wake up ready in the morning. I even took snacks with me um, that I got from RT Mart and I'm ready to go. I left, took a taxi, or they ordered a taxi to come for me and um, to take me to the train station. I took the train um, to the train station. It was a really long train ride no one told me actually that there's two trains there's the fast train and the slow train and i learned that sometime later um so i took the train to um long yam road and then i can't remember I took i think another train and then i had to take a taxi and i remember that because i showed the taxi driver where i was going and he dropped me off where he thought i was going and what was written down on the paper um, and actually, I ended up walking around in circles about five times, <laughs> completely in the wrong location, but actually not too far from where I was supposed to be. And it was customs. And customs in Shanghai is, it's just nowhere. It's like it's just nowhere. You know, there isn't a train station next to it or, or that you could walk to. It's just nowhere. And there's a lot of customs, um, operations going on there um, so I got there eventually I had to walk really far and I got to this building and there was a man in uniform which was security and didn't speak any English at all not even a little bit um, and I'm showing him my documents and I'm showing him some of the things in Chinese um, and the taxi driver is still waiting for me because, sorry, I walked and took a taxi. Let me correct that myself. I did walk and I did take a taxi up from, because the walk was just really long and I needed to get into customs. So a taxi driver was wait, that taxi driver was waiting for me. And um, I was asking the security guy, you know, or showing him, you know, that I need to get my luggage from customs. So anyway, he was really helpful, really, 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 really helpful. Um, and I paid the taxi driver um, because even then I didn't have um, a Diddy account, so I had, to, I had cash. So I paid the taxi driver and he left. And this security guy was so, so helpful. And he showed me um, where I needed to go. By the time I left, I think I left about seven in the morning my apartment and by the time I arrived at the location that opens at 9 it was probably about 11 30 quarter to 12 and it's because I just was going around in circles and I didn't have a you know I didn't have a phone with Google Maps or anything um, and I was just you know having to ask people and show them the, the picture and the oh work it all out it was just a headache so anyway I got to a building and I was told that I need to go to the next door building and then they said go back to the building and when I went back to that building everybody was on lunch and then I had to wait one hour <laughs> life experiences I had to wait one hour um, before it reopened so I waited patiently and <coughs> excuse me and I had to complete some forms. I did show them what I had and I completed some forms and then I had to go back to the next door building. Took the forms back to the next door building, had to go to the back of the next door building, show them the forms and I could see my suitcases. I could see them, they're like right there. Those are my suitcases, it made me so happy. So I had to, I don't know what I was even waiting for. Till this day, I do not even know what I was waiting for. I gave them the forms, showed them my ID, showed them that my employer um, permits, um, employment permits from my employer. 
waited, I must have waited about half an hour for them to just walk there and give me my suitcases. So, um, yeah, after half an hour, I got my suitcases, <laughs> got my suitcases. And there's some forms on the suitcases. Um, and one of them was from the ship, the people who shipped my things. And it said that they had removed some aerosols and the food. The food that I'd completely forgotten about. And I thought, oh my God, I forgot. I remember that I had then put the food in, but um, maybe they've left the containers. So they've opened the container and threw away the food. And actually, no, they just throw away the whole thing. So I've got my suitcases, really, really happy. Um, I don't even remember how I got back. I was so happy, but I definitely took a taxi back to Long Yang Road to get on the train to go back to Padong. So that is what happened with me and my suitcases. I finally got them. Um, I was so happy. I think it's just that comfort of having your personal belongings, right? Um, I was just overjoyed that I had my suitcases. So um, moving forward, yeah, I continued or started my life um, and my working life and personal life in, in China. So the coming weeks, um, I, it was about really fine, getting hold of a phone. I still really hadn't gone anywhere, really. I was trying to just, I stayed locally. Um, and I think a, a bit of it was a, a confidence thing and just organizing myself and my mind that I'm here. China is very, very different. I can't explain it to you unless you're, you physically go there. It's just so different. Um, and one of the girls that I was working with, I was telling her a story about my phone, how I was running for the plane, my phone dropped and it never worked again and she actually had a phone and I bought it from her super, super cheap, like almost free. And um, so it was, and it was an old, um, it was an old iPhone, I mean super old and I still have it, it's, I still have that phone. Um, and also the reason why I have that phone is because I remember my first year, it was the first year of um, me working there, um, it was holiday time and I remember seeing her and I was asking her what she was going to do for the holiday and um, she was telling me that she was going to go home, she was from Mexico, she was going to go home and spend time with her family and um, she was going to hang out with her brother. Um, and she, we were just talking about you know places to go in Asia, and she's telling me telling me which places are really, really great to go, and see. And um, after we came back from the holiday, she didn't come back, and what transpired is that she was really unwell, um, and sadly she passed away. So I kind of kept that phone for that reason. You know, I didn't really know her that long, but I, I knew her for a year. But I, our paths didn't really every day um, but it was she was so nice and I just I just kept the phone I didn't want to just pass it on I know it's just a phone but if I ever have an emergency again and I need the phone or if somebody else has an emergency I think I would give it to somebody who was in an emergency and they didn't have one so yeah my life started um, began as I you know because I've got my suitcases now and I feel like I can just relax and I've got my stuff around me. <laughs> it's the silly the things that stuff can do to you, right? The way it can make you feel having your own things around you. So as for how long it took me to settle, to get my bearings, you know, I started getting the bus to RT Mart, the supermarket. I started to get on the train. Um, and the answer to that question is, it took me a while. It took me a while. I would say in months, it probably probably took me about six months to kind of understand the processes in China and how people kind of move and operate in China. Even, even after five years of living there, I still didn't quite get some, some things, but I kind of, I, I was comfortable with, well, I, was, I had to kind of get along with it, right? Um, but I would say after about six months, I felt like I, I felt more settled, I could get my bearings, you know, going to the bank, 
understanding the breaking process, which is a nightmare. A nightmare in the sense that it takes so, so long. I mean, I've been in the, when I know what I was going to the bank for was really just to transfer money home and it can take an hour. You're just waiting. Paper, 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 paper. China loves paper and stamps and fingerprints. They love that. And so the banking experience was a bit of a long, unnecessary and tiring process. But moving around, I mean, I'm pretty confident traveling by myself anyway, but I, when you have such a barrier, such as the language and culture, and China is so different to any other part of the world. It, for me personally, it took some time. So I'd say six months, um, and also just communicating my needs, even with people in China who spoke English, um, it's sometimes quite difficult for them to kind of understand what you're saying. Um, when I moved from Shanghai and I moved to Zhejiang province, um, you know, I it was what year two, and I downloaded Taobao or started using Taobao, um, which is online shopping. Um, so I would order like my groceries via Taobao, but they would come from um, Shanghai, um, and other things would come from like Hong Kong, for instance. Like if I ordered to certain toiletries, they would come from Hong Kong um, and other places in China. Um, so yeah, it took me a while, but to be honest, I don't think I ever really completely settled in China. I think it was so drastically different from me. Although I was going about my daily business um, and doing my job and traveling, I don't think I, not that I don't even think, I didn't completely settle in China. It was a little bit too extreme for me. Um, my second city that I lived in, as I mentioned, Zhejiang province, I really love that city. Beautiful city, beautiful, beautiful city. You know, I would be cycling there, I would work out by the water, I could go to the gym, the metro system was wonderful. Um, very clean there, very brand new, very young and, you know, fashionable there. Um, and it was just, it was an easy city to live in. Um, I had my vegan um, place to go and eat and, you know, I'd hang out with um, some of my friends that were, who became my friends there. Um, you know, and I have Chinese friends as well as other expat friends who are great people. So, but even still, I never really completely felt settled in China. But as for moving around, I just got on with it. I got on with it and, I, and a lot of it I learned as I went along. Um, but yeah, that is my story um, about finally getting my suitcases and also just settling and living my life and five years goes really really quickly um, and you learn so much and I learned little bits of the language especially because I'm vegan so it was really important for me to um, know how to communicate if I wanted certain things or I wanted to make sure there wasn't any animal products in my food so I learned certain phrases and words um, also, when I event when I downloaded Diddy, which I didn't download Diddy, which is the app for the taxi, I didn't download that until I moved to Zhejiang Province, um, and I used it regularly and the train. Um, I learned certain phrases, especially if I wanted to get off, um, get out of the taxi at a different location, and just you know being able to do that. So yeah, I was able to confidently get by. Like if I went back to China now, I could easily get by because I understand the processes and how things kind of operate. Um, you know, Shanghai is a good city. It's a, it's a good city for expats. There's a lot of were a lot of expats there. A lot of them have since left. Um, but it's very thriving. It's a thriving city with a lot happening. It's open pretty much all night as opposed to the city that I was living in and everything would be closed at like 10 um, and no one, I'd look out my window, no one would be there. Um, but yeah, that was my experience living in China, even though it wasn't part of my plan. Um, and I don't regret my experience. I think there shouldn't be regrets when you make, make those types of decisions. 
Um, there was a lot of learning um, on my part, um, and I'm, I'm, I am glad that I made that move because you know I've opened my eyes to new experiences and new opportunities. Um, but now I am living in Africa, <laughs> um, and new opportunities and new experiences. And as my vlogs continue, I will, um, you know, share with you my experiences about living here in Africa. Um, and to be honest, where I am right now, you know, it's challenging. But I'll talk about that in another vlog. So don't forget to subscribe and like and share and please comment. Um, I'm really grateful for the people who have been commenting and subscribing. Thank you so much. Um, I'm enjoying this new experience on YouTube. So yes, thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.